Good morning, everyone, and happy new year. Blessings to the Lord and thank him for his grace and mercy in this year that God has allowed us to enter another year. Um, realizing that there are some family members and maybe friends that are not here. Um, but we are here, and that's uh, what's important. And so this morning, uh, I simply want to come to you in the name of Jesus Christ and present the word of God that God has given me as we go on forth in this month of January. And so um, the Lord has really pressed upon my heart of uh, the direction of life changing faith and the things that uh, we need to do and should be doing. Um, in many cases, um, we're this year coming up, uh, it will be 30 years uh, come October 17th. And um, I really want to change things here at Life Changing Faith and uh, change how we operate, change uh, um, um, what's going on in our church. And, and I really feel that um, uh, either we're going to be unified or we're not. And we need to get, com um, get committed in the community and we need to establish certain foundational things in this church that um, whether I'm here or not, um, somebody else is here, that the church uh, will continue to fulfill the vision and the mission that God has given us from the beginning. And, you know, a lot of times we escape or we don't look at the elephant in the room, but we don't have a lot of unity here. And that is, that is my fault in 90% in of the cases. Um, there are some people that are simply not coming back to this ministry. Um, that certainly is their choice. And I believe that some uh, God has simply moved on uh, because we need a foundation of people that are going to work with me and work with me in ministry and be a part of this ministry and at least give me the respect of the office, even if you don't like me. Give me the respect of the office. And so um, there's going to have to be more participation from everybody in the ministry. Uh, for years, I went through people who have come here. And, you know, one thing about it is that um, in the early years, I'm just pulling my heart out a little bit this morning before I get started. People who would minister would minister and would invite people when they were preaching. And then when they weren't preaching, those, they didn't invite anybody. Well, it's everybody's responsibility to help build the church. This year, I'm on a mission of building the church. I want a strong children's program. I want a strong adult program. And so um, I'm going to start off what we have. At this particular time, I don't know who's here, who's not going to be here, but I need people who's going to participate with me in the vision that God has given me. And I would certainly like the respect, if you would certainly just give me that respect, that if you know you're not going to be here and I start making assignments, please just tell me. That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking anything else. I'm not going to get mad. You can sit here. You can be, you can be helpful. Um, whatever it is that God has called you to do. Um, but um, I ask for that respect, that if you're not going to be here, not going to support this ministry and support me in the vision that God has given me, then I'm simply asking you to let me know. And, and, I, and that's all I can ask. So that goes for those of you online as well. Um, I'm praying that at some point everybody will come back to the ministry where we can, we can actually function. I want praise and worship. I have to find a way how to get that done. Um, last year, 2022, I had four jobs. Four. And um, it has really taken away from me doing some of the things I need to do here in the ministry. And I think I'm in a good position now where um, I have to let it go and continue to trust God in what he has called me to do. So that means that um, I will have to be here. And there's a lot of things to get done in this church that I need to get done. Um, so I'll be coming up here getting that done, making it a better place for you and for the Spanish church that is sharing this ministry with us as well. So in the coming months, uh, hopefully by the end of January, I'd like to have everything in place. I'd like to have the board in place. Um, those people who I would ask to serve on the board um, will help give the direction to this church. It can't be just one person making all the decisions. It has to be a collective of people who have a heart and vision for the things for what God has called this church to do. And this church was called 
And the first point that, I, that God assigned this uh, ministry to me was uh, deliverance and healing and teaching. And we'd have done part of that, but it has not been in a way that we're all unified. Um, we have things, or we'll have, and people wouldn't show up. And when you had something, people would show up. Well, I'm going to change that. You don't participate, you know, you, know, you want to have a seat, that's fine. If you decide not to participate, my, my thing is, how in the world can you minister to people that you're not fellowshipping with? And I, I find that very difficult, that if you're not going to fellowship with the people, then why in the world would you have anything to do with them in the first place? I, I just don't understand that. So those are some of the things that's going to change in the coming year, um, in the coming months. Let's put it like that. Uh, hopefully by March, some things would have transpired would have caused us to do more. I'm also starting a fundraiser. Um, I'll put it up to replace the front doors. Um, that to replace the front doors costs approximately $6,000. I already got the, the doors. I found the price of the doors, the frame. And I have a guy, a friend of mine, is going to come down from Eastern Shores, a contractor, going to put the doors in for me free of charge. I'm not going to charge one red cent. Uh, just need some help getting that done. Um, the other objective is to make sure that I'm meeting the needs of those that are here, um, those um, uh, uh, people, uh, the new people that's going to come in. I believe God's going to add to this ministry. We're going to put a sign up front. I'm going to put a sign out back, uh, letting the people know who we are in this community. And we're gonna, I'm going to start getting out in the community. I'm going to start walking around and meeting some people, letting them know who we are. And I really need to concentrate on getting this church foundation done. That means deacons in place, deaconesses in place. That means ministers, elders in place. And uh, one thing that I have asked and I always get pushed back on is when I have meetings, nobody want to have a meeting. Well, you don't want to come to the meeting. You can't be on anything. Next thing is, it's badges. Nobody knows who anybody is. So I'm going to make it, I'm going to make it easy for you. I'm going to get badges made. You got to wear the badge while you're here. I have a board where you can put the badge back on the board. When you leave, you can leave it there so you always know where it is. You don't want to wear your badge, you can't serve in this church. That's how it's going to be. That's what I'm going to demand and ask of each leader in this church, uh, that we can get some stability, we can get some organizational structure, and that we all can, can help. I can't do this by myself, but there need to be structure, just like it is on your job. You have SOPs. You have certain ways you have to operate. Well, I'm expecting the same thing here at this ministry of those people that we're going to serve, the children that we're going to serve. And so I want to make it so that this ministry is doing what it's supposed to be doing, whether I am here or not. And preparing the ministry for the next pastor um, that will pastor this church. Um, I'm getting older. We all are getting a little older. And so I've been really praying about successor. Um, uh, that God want to raise somebody up, move somebody in, that I can teach, train, instruct in the time that I know that the Lord has given me to operate in this ministry. Now, some people may like it, some may not, but that is the direction that this church is going in. We need a foundation. We need structure, and we need to make sure that everybody is operating in the gifts and the abilities and talents that they have to help this church to do what God wanted to do. Otherwise, what's the use of having a church? What's the use of even being here? So uh, uh, among the teaching that I'm doing, uh, the ministers will be doing. Um, I don't know what month, but I have to have surgery on my other shoulder. I cried like a baby because I didn't want to have rotated cuff surgery anymore. But I know I'm going to have to have rotated cuff surgery at some point, And I'm putting it off. Um, uh, until I get everything that I need in place. And so I need your help. And those of you online, I need your help as well. Um, but I ask you, please, give me the respect. That if you're not going to be here, let me know. That way, um, I know not to ask you to be on anything or to support in anything. So simply said, that's all I have to say about that. Let's get on to the Word of God. Good morning everybody. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you this morning and certainly bless you. Huh, what another day you have given us, Lord God. 
And Lord, thank you for the Holy Spirit that gives us the instructions and guidance. Because Lord, I realize that if I don't pray, I cannot distinguish between your voice and my words and my thoughts. And so I'm asking you in Jesus' name, Father, to give me, oh Lord, the insight, wisdom, and revelation to lead this ministry. That's why you called me off my job years ago. That's why you have instructed me. That's why I believe, Lord, without a shadow of a doubt, that COVID just wasn't for the nation, but it was for the church as well. And Lord, certainly this is your ministry. And certainly you have provided for it and you have called it according to your divine will and purpose. And Lord, we simply want to fulfill that which you have given us. Lord God, I ask in Jesus' name that there be no separation among us but unity. I pray, Lord, that you would once again allow me to bring together the men and women, the boys and girls, that will cause the church to flourish and will cause people to come in and to become active partners within life-changing faith evangelistic ministries. Lord, I pray that I will fulfill your divine will and that you, Heavenly Father, will be glorified and honored in this church. In Jesus' name we pray. And everybody said, amen. amen. Turn your Bible to Luke, the 18th chapter. And we're going to read, we're going to read uh, in Luke about two men and what God has really placed on my heart. That it is, it is an impossibility for us to operate in, and to flow in the things of God if we're broken. If we're dealing with sin that still is dominating our lives at some level. And so when I was praying and I was, I, was, I was talking to the Lord, because this has to be an intense year of prayer. It has to be an intense year that, that we are seeking God and that, and that we are making ourselves available to help those people that God's going to bring in. And so the Lord has impressed upon my heart for the month of January. There are many churches that have, that have gone on fasting. And so they got 30-day fast, 40-day 40 40 day fast. Some churches have um, Daniel fast. And I don't really think just from, just from listening to people or listening to pastors, they really understand what fasting is. We're going to do things a little differently for the month of January uh, four different aspects of things that God wants us to do that's going to improve our relationship with him. Not church, but with him. Because, see, what I understand is that your relationship with me will always be cankered if we don't, if we don't operate uh, and love God to a level that we're worshiping him. See, the more you love God, the more I benefit. The more you obey God, the more I benefit. The less you obey God, the more trouble you become. And so I understand that for myself as well, is that the more I love God, the more I allow him to change me, the more I allow God to, uh, to, to reveal to me the things that's in me, the things that I'm dealing with, the things that, that, that's going on in my life, I can't help anybody else. I can't really have a deep, honest relationship with you either, and neither can you with me. And so what happened in 2022, that's behind me. Y'all want to deal with it? You go ahead and deal with it. What happened in 1973 or 1993, all that stuff, in the, I ain't got time to deal with that. Right now is in the now. I want my relationship to deepen with God to the point that God is using us, and I really believe that God's going to, going to send out a fresh anointing upon those leaders and those people that have a heart to serve God, and God, God is once again going to release his power because right now there's nothing happening. It's like the book of Judges. Like for 400 years, there was, there, God didn't speak. 400 years, God didn't speak. Until you read after the book of Judges, God began to speak. And I just believe that God is getting us to a place where we're going to cast out devils. We're going to lay hands on the sick. And we're going to minister the teaching ministries of God that's going to change people's lives. It's not, we're not just here just, just to patty you up. It's time for all of us to, to begin to do what God has called us to do. That on that day that we have to meet the Lord, whether through death or, do, or through being taken up out of here, we're going to be ready. And each person has to make that decision for themselves. So in Luke, the 18th chapter, and looking, starting at verse number 9. Luke, the 18th chapter, 
starting at verse number nine. And, and the Lord, and I was praying last night, and the Lord just, just said, okay, I want you to go here, and this is what I want you to talk about, because it is imperative in the church. And for those of you that are online, please uh, don't get distracted this morning. It says in Luke number nine, and Jesus said this was, this was a parable. John said this was a parable. So this is an illustration, all right? It's not a true story. It's an illustration. Look what he says. And he spake this parable unto certain who trusted what? In themselves. No trust in God. That they were righteous and despised others. That's a problem in the church. That's a tra problem with people who, who believe because they've been in church a long time that uh, um, you despise those who maybe not be not, not where you think they should be or how they may live or how they may act. I think every party that has a breath in their body that I have a responsibility to show the love of God. I have a real responsibility to pray for them. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason that God want to connect you with people that don't look like you or connect you with people that you can share the gospel with. And so Jesus said that these two, one was righteous and guess what? And despised others because they trusted what? In themselves. Number 10. He said two men went into the temple to pray. The one a Pharisees and the other a publican. Who was a publican? Publican were Jewish tax collectors. And the Roman Empire used the publicans to go to the Jews to collect taxes. And so they were the most hated people within that particular region because the um, tax collectors or the publicans, and you know Matthew was a tax collector, were often charge more than was necessary and would put some in their pocket and would give some to the Roman Empire. And so they were despised. They were uh, a public and was most despised person within the, uh, uh, that community. And people looked down on them. The Pharisees, on another, were re was a religious sect of people. They lived by the law. They trusted in themselves. They bragged about what they did. They often had influence and would manipulate people. They were a religious sect, or what you would call the church. But they weren't the church because there was no church defined, but they were operating simply by the law. He said, two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee and the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus within himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, and even this tax collector. Even in his prayer, he, he's, he's not really praying to God. That shows his self-righteousness. He's simply talking about the tax collector, the one who he's referring to as an extortioner, the one he referred to as an uh, adulterer, and to be unjust. And look what he says about himself. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. And the publican, standing afar off, would not lift up so much as his eyes unto heaven. He smote his breast, saying, God, be merciful unto me, a sinner. 14, Jesus says, in conclusion, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone that exalted himself shall be brought down. And he that humbled himself shall what? Be exalted. This morning I want to talk to you from the subject, self examination. Many times we often examine somebody else's lives and we don't deal with us. We don't deal with our attitude and we don't deal with things in our lives and we often uh, 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 allow our past sometimes to prevent us from dealing with us. 
One thing about the, uh, the tax collector is the Bible says he identified, he said, Father, forgive me. He said, for I am a sinner recognizing the wrong that he may have done or performed. See, this month, God told me, is a month of self-examination. It's a month for us to sit down and look at our own lives, and I will ask you a question. If you looked in the mirror, what do you actually see? What are some of the things you're struggling with? What are some of the thoughts that you're having? What are some of the behavior things in our lives that we have not dealt with and went to God with? One thing that's broken about the church is that we have so many broken people within the confounds of the body of Christ trying to help somebody else when you're broken, when your marriage is in, is, is in disarray, when you really don't have a prayer life, you don't really read the Bible, maybe except on Sunday. There's really no, there's really no uh, a, a joy in your life. And everywhere you seem to go, you seem to put down others. That means to tell me there's a problem there, is that we have never sat down and simply examined our own heart. How do I examine my own heart? I examine uh, my, my life. When I talk about self-examination, I would like to ask the question, how's your relationship with God? How has your relationship been with God uh, during 2022? How much time did you spend uh, praying individually, not collectively. How many, much time have you really spent reading the word of God and spending time with God, deepening your relationship with you? Oh, it's easy for people to get involved in church and get involved in activities. But my question to you is, do you really have faith in God? Because you need to, we need to examine ourselves. I have to examine myself. Do you find yourself talking about people? Do you find yourself talking about situations instead of believing God and trusting God to get you through? You often find yourself in problems and, and, and things that are disruptive to your, to your uh, normal way of living, and you find yourself trying to solve the problem without ever seeking God. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6, Trust in the Lord with all thy heart. Lean not to thy own understanding, and all thy ways do what? And he would do what? Well, most people, we're not following that scripture. And so, therefore, there's a lot of headaches within church. Most people don't want to come to church because there are some people they don't like and there's some people they don't speak to. And there's some people that I find that will say little things to people to disrupt them because maybe uh, you're jealous of them. Maybe God is using them and not using you. You see, the point of the matter is when you stand before God, see, it's what God has is, is called us to do and called us to be, that you should never be jealous of anybody. There's somebody that's going to do it better than you. There's somebody that, that, that's less talented that God will simply anoint to do something that will cause it to just flourish for his glory. And people, I find people in the church get jealous. There's no need to get jealous because what jealousy is, the Bible says in Timothy, is every evil work. And so we need to look at ourselves this month. We need to really take a look at ourselves and, 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 and we need to get it right before the end of the month. I would like for us to have it right, but you need to sit down, get a cup of coffee, get some tea or whatever you want to drink, and sit down and start examining your relationship with God. I had to examine my relationship with my wife. Am I really honoring her? Am I really respecting her? Because how in the world can we have a, a good marriage, uh, a good partnership, if I'm, if I'm not addressing the issues, not what she's doing, but what I'm doing to her, and vice versa to the husband? So this, this Pharisee would not even identify his failure. But he looked at somebody else. How many times in church you done looked at somebody else and you begin to judge them because maybe what you heard uh, uh, they have done or you heard what they have said, and so guess what? You mistreat them. We all have done it. Don't sit here like you have never done it. We all have done it. But now I want to get you to the point for the month of January instead of fasting and not eating feet, uh, meat, or, or food, I want to get you to the point that you're going to examine yourself. And I'm going to give you some things that God has given me for self-examination. We can't, we can't keep going forward 
trying to preach to somebody else when you don't even speak to them. You don't even talk to them. You don't even respect them. You see, many times, see, you don't want to get up in the church, and we don't want to talk about what's really the issues within the church. People call me and tell me, well, I left because of this person. I left because they said that. You mean to tell me you let a human being run you away from the place where God planted you? You mean you're that weak? And so we all need to check ourselves. I got to check myself. How do I feel towards you? Am I respecting you? Am I honoring you? And I'm honoring, see, I can't, I can't do that unless I first die to myself and die to my emotions and my feelings and, and die to the enemy trying to speak to my mind, trying to tell me what you're thinking or what I think you're thinking. And so we come to church with this fakeness on. And we have for years here of life changing faith. We don't have dinners and breakfasts and people don't even show up. I don't like the food. Well, if you don't like the food, don't eat, but you can at least fellowship. You can at least talk to that brother or talk to that sister. You can at least find out who they are instead of passing them in church. We need to be visible, and we need to show the world what unity really is. Don't talk to me about unity if you're not going to be willing to unify. So that's why God says, now, he is the one that broke things up. He's the one that, that, that caused some people not to be here. Not because we didn't want them here, but if you're not going to unify and work together, what's the use? You, you just become an a, a, a irritating a cog within the a work of God. And it's not my job to run anybody. I want everybody to come. I want everybody to sit here. I want everybody to participate. And nobody makes the decisions in this church. We should respect each other. You should at least give me that respect. If you don't respect, if you don't like me, at least give me respect of the office. Respect what God has called me to do. Respect that I got to finish this race that God has put me on. Because I don't know how much time I have. So self-examination, number one, requires truthfulness for oneself. You have to be true to yourself. I have to be true to my relationship with God, true to my relationship with my wife, true to those that God has put for me to, to shepherd because I'm the only one in this church that has to give an account for your soul. Nobody else has to give an account for your soul but me. And God's going to judge me. How did I treat you? Did I show favoritism? Did I, get, did I try to encourage everybody? You see, I have to check me. They, they can't, you see, that's one thing. As much as I love my family, I can never show favoritism to my family over those within this ministry. Because that has to die. That, has, that cannot be. And I have found uh, uh, people who, who I don't let people come and tell me, tell me anything. If there's somebody says something, keep it to yourself. Because what I don't know can't hurt me. Amen? Amen. And, if, and, if, and if the person who said it they're not, the, they're not the dangerous ones. It's the one who brings it to you. That's the, that's the dangerous one. So guess what? Don't bring me nothing. Don't bring me talking about somebody. Don't, don't come here and tell me what they said and, and, and what they said about the church because here's what I learned. In all my years, I simply want to honor God. He says, but I say unto you, love your enemies. Here's another one. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despisefully use you. Matthew chapter 5, verse 44. Here's another one that you got to put into practice. And when you pray, thou shalt not be as a hypocrite are. For they love to pray standing in the church. And in the corners of the street, that they may be seen of men, verily I say unto you, they have their reward. You see, I'm following the scripture. I didn't always do that. How many of us always did that? We didn't. Now, I can, listen, I, I have a responsibility. If I feel anything in my gut towards you, I got to deal with it. I can't let it fester there because it will bring up 
at some point bitterness. And when that bitterness comes in, it begins to spread. There's nothing you can do about it until you repent and turn to God. Number one was what? Truthfulness. You need to be truthful to yourself. Truthful about your relationship with God. Truthful about who you are and are you dealing with you. That goes for preachers, pastors, apostles, bishops, anybody that go to church. Anybody here that you're a part of life-changing faith? It's time to change. And stop talking about people. Stop saying what you don't like. Stop saying negative things all the time. Ain't nobody coming to the church. Maybe you're the problem. When have you invited somebody to the ministry? When have you invited somebody to the church? Family, friends, co-workers. I haven't been through that. People would invite, only invite somebody when they were preaching. And when they weren't preaching, they didn't invite nobody. And we went through that for years. And God said, enough is enough. I am, you're not fighting me. You're not fighting me. You, you, whatever you attack me, you, God deal with you. If I attack you, God deal with me. And I ain't attacking nobody because I need to deepen my relationship with God. I cannot go through this life trying to distinguish, did God say that or did I say that? Or did the enemy say that? You can only come to, a, uh, to know God's voice when you spend time with him. So number one, you need to be truthful with yourself about your relationship with God. If you have any unforgiveness and you have not forgiven, you cannot be forgiven until you forgive. And forgiveness is not just saying I forgive. It's in character, attitude that shows that you have forgiven. Number two, an acknowledgement. I have to acknowledge what's in me. What is in you that you are not dealing with? What's in you? What, what, what has a grip on your life that's preventing you from, from having this deep relationship with God? Knowing Scripture is great, but knowing Scripture will, will never bring the anointing of God in your life. It's living out the Word of God. It's living out God's truth. It's obeying God's Word that then brings the blessing in your life, that makes that, that Scripture real in your life. So number two, there's an acknowledgement. What did the, what did the guy say in uh, Luke? He said, Father, forgive me. He identified that I am a what? Sinner. I identify. Acknowledgement. There has to be an acknowledgement. I often tell the guys uh, when I'm on a prayer call, uh, sometimes they need to be acknowledged. You have a problem with lust. Acknowledge it. I have a problem with liking people. Acknowledge it. I have a problem. I'm fearful of somebody using me or her. Acknowledge it. When you acknowledge it, it loses its power to, to uh, dominate in your life. But whatever you don't acknowledge, it will simply control you and put you in bondage. And God wants us what? Free. God wants us what? It's often hard for uh, young couples, married couples, to talk to each other because they won't be honest with each other. If the, mate, if, if the wife or the husband is honest, learn to accept it. Listen to what they're saying. Stop always trying to think for them. Allow them to express, baby, I'm unhappy. Why? You said this, and I, it, hurt, you know, it hurt my feelings. Talk about it. Acknowledgement. I have to acknowledge my life. I want my relationship with God. I want God in my life. I want, I want God to lead me and guide me. I don't need no interference. And 99% of the interference come from our uh, position of not dealing with ourselves. You'll walk out of this church. People go to church every Sunday, sit in the pews or sit in the chairs and leave out the same way because they're so busy dealing with everybody else's, what they're doing, and still you uh, are dealing with you. God can't use you. Even though he's almighty, God can't use you until you learn to deal with whatever's in your life, whether it's in your uh, adolescence or, or your adult years or, or your experience 
uh, in, being inside of a local body, you've been hurt, you've been talked about, you've been shunned, uh, you've been disliked, uh, all these things have, can have an effect when we don't deal with it. And God simply wants us to what? Deal with us. Self-examination. Tell your neighbor, self-examination. I am not going into the rest of this year not hearing from God on a consistent basis. So what I'm telling you is what I'm doing and what I have to put in practice myself. Number three, honesty. You have to be honest with yourself. Many people look for affirmation from, from other people to be accepted, to be liked. And many times in church, you'll find the most hateful people in church. You'll find cliques. You'll find people who only speak to certain people. You'll find it where, and you shouldn't find it, within the local body of God. How in the world does the early church have such a, 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 a vision of unity? And the Bible said they had all things, not some things, they had all things in common. They were helping each other. They were bringing food and they were bringing their stuff and laying at the apostles' feet that others may uh, enjoy the feasting of it. And what do we have today? Bickering and jealousy and, and I should be preaching or hell, yeah, who should be? You Listen, God called me to be the pastor. But there's no way I can, I can really hear from God with all the distractions if I don't spend time with him. And before I can go forward, I got to check me. I got to check me. I got to check my life. I got to see what hindrances there are that's preventing me from hearing God. I got to see why is it that sometimes uh, at the, at the, it's not clear. So one, I got to be truthful. Two, there has to be an acknowledgement. Three, there has to be honesty of oneself. I'm not all that. I'm, you know, I, I want to be like the, uh, the, uh, the tax collector. I want to identify. I ain't got time to be, listen, I'll pray for you, no doubt. But I ain't got, listen, what, what, what value is it for me to talk about you? Why do people talk about people? Because they have low self-esteem. And so talking about you makes them feel better about themselves, and that's crazy. That you would go home and talk about people or talk about me. What I ain't doing, what I supposed to be doing, and all this. And you won't even spend time praying for me? That tells you that you're in a bad place. And if I talk about you, that means I'm in a what? Bad place. And I cannot afford, at my age, to be in a bad place. So God, God goes, I said, Lord, strip me down. Strip me down, God. Because I can't have anything in my life if God's going to use me to cast out devils, if God's going to use me to uh, lay hands on the sick, if God's going to use me to preach his message. I want the anointing to flow without any hindrance in my life at all. And God want to use you, but he can't use you if you don't at least do these things. Number four, confession. Confession. The Bible says, confess your sins. Confess them. You don't have to simply confess your sins to people. Go to God with it. The publican, he didn't go to anybody. He got on his face. The Bible said he wouldn't even lift up his head. But he said, Father, forgive me, for I am a sinner. See, I want to identify what's in me. And so there has to be a level of confession. That's why the Bible says in 1 John 1 and 9, confess your sins, for he is what? Faithful in what? To forgive us of what? All our sins. So I don't care what somebody think about me. You may, you may hear me curse. <laughs> then I'm going to go ask God to forgive me. You're still talking about me, and yet I'm forgiven. You see, y'all, did that make sense? Somebody you know messed up, sinned, or did something, they go to God and repent and ask God to forgive them with a true repentant heart, and you're still talking about them. That don't make sense. 
Number five, there has to be a repentive heart. A repentive heart. A, a, a heart that really sorrowful for, for what they've done against God. Not against people. Against disobeying the word of God. A repentive heart. The, re, the tax collector was repentive. The uh, Pharisee was unrepentive. He wouldn't even be honest with himself. He wouldn't be truthful with himself. He wouldn't acknowledge his, his wrongs and messed up. And this certainly was no confession and no honesty. Month of January is a month of self examination On your job, how are you acting on your job? Do you listen to nasty jokes? Do you complain like everybody else? Is your conversation any different than theirs? Are you afraid to be a light? The church has fallen asleep. And people are more concerned with material wealth than they are with their spiritual wealth and spiritual growth in God. And I'm only telling you what God told me. God said there needs to be first be a self-examination. David said in Psalm, examine me, O God. But God said, wait a minute now. He said, I already know what's in you. I already know what you think. I already know what's in your mind. He said, but I want you to acknowledge it. I want you to uh, confess it. I want you to come to me because my arms are wide open. God said my arms are wide open to forgive you for whatever. So when you're forgiven, how does a forgiven man act? He acts like he's forgiven. The Bible says there's now no condemnation to them that are what? Who have turned, who have confessed. Number one, truthfulness. Number two, acknowledgement. Number three, honesty. Number four, confession. And number five, a repentant heart. If I tell you all the things I've been through in coming up on 30 years, most of my trouble came as a result of listening to my own mind tell me things that wasn't true. I could blame this person for this ministry and this person why this didn't happen. I could blame this. And you know what? What value is that? When God says, look at yourself. And even through that ignorance of mine at that time, God still sustained this ministry, but lets me know his hand still is on it. God is still in charge if we listen to him. Do you realize what we can do if we work together? Do you realize what we can accomplish as a body? Do you realize when you stand before God, if you have not been honest with yourself, truthful with yourself, acknowledge your sins and confession, can you imagine what God would say to you? Why you impress people. God is unimpressed. Until we begin to put into practice the very word of God. So here's what the Lord says. Month of January is self-examination month. I'm looking at myself. I'm looking at how I interact with people. What can I do better to change it? What can I do better to interact with you? What can I do better? Can't expect me to get on the phone call or everybody. But I can treat you. I can pray for you. I can intercede for you. I can be there if, if God allows it up to do, to do things. But we need to work together. Amen. We got family members still unsaved. Who would want to go to church, go to church and everybody been there for years and it's still broken? God's not going to bring them in. Now, I can use trickery. I can use mis manipulate scripture, tell you everybody come to church, you're going to get $1,000. I can put gas in your car, tell you everybody go to the gas station, put gas in your car, put food in your house, pay for your groceries, but your soul is broken. You're unhappy. You're still unfulfilled. When you talk about people and you put people down or you talk about me or you complain about me, means you have a problem. If I talk about you and put you down, I certainly have a problem. So month of January is self-examination month. For the first week, starting tomorrow, 
Husband and wives, God said, pray for each other. Express what you want God to do in each other's lives. Now, you don't have to do it. That's up to you. Well, I told my wife, you're going to have to follow what God told me. So when I pray for her, I'm praying what I want God to do in her life. I want you, God, to just raise her up, and I want you, God, to comfort her heart. God, I want you to use her as you see fit. God, I, I want her to be everything the Bible says she should be as a woman of God. And then she prays for me. And she tells God what she wants in my life. That's for the first week. Singles, those that are not married, Partner up with someone to pray at least once during the day and express what you desire for God to do in their lives. Partner up with someone. If you don't have a partner, call me. I'll partner up with you. But expect the truth when you call. Month of January, we're not fasting. No, we self-examination. Husband and wives need to pray for each other. We don't always tell each other what's on our mind, what's on our heart. Singles need to pray for each other and express what you desire for God to do in their lives. It's time for us to change and really get serious about our personal relationship with God. More than coming to church. More than sitting here listening to uh, me or the ministers or elders preach or teach. It's past influence. God says he that's seeking to, uh, to push himself up, God said, I'll bring him down. But he that humbled himself, God said, I'll exalt. In what? In due time. According to whose purpose? I had one person tell me years ago, they had left the church. And they called me back and said, look, we want to come back. But we want to be in a position where we were before. And I said, that's not going to happen. I said, when you left, God utilized somebody else. They got mad. Talked about me like a dog. But guess what? I never talked about them. I never scandalized their name. Because people think they can come here and do whatever they want to do. You think your longevity in church gives you a certain uh, credence to control anything? None of us do. I don't care how long you've been here. We all have to follow the Holy Spirit and what God has given us to do. We all have to come under subjection to the Spirit of the Lord. Being a pastor and a spiritual leader here, I have to hear from God. I have to know what God is telling me to do. And so this month is a month of self-examination. As I go through at the end of the month, I should be in a place. I should be in this place where me and God, where me and God are just, I'm listening, I'm hearing. Because in late April or, or, or mid-spring, I got to go out to outdoor church. I got to go out and talk to the prostitutes, the drug addicts. I got to talk to people that won't come here. I got to go around to the corner. But that's part of what God assignment God has given me. And when God bring them in here, I need people who, who, who have uh, uh, surrendered their lives and, and are serving God from a true perspective of their heart that you can now minister to those people. I don't have people come in here, befriend people, buy them gifts. Call them up. So when they left, they can carry them with them. God allowed it. You think I got mad about it? For a minute I did. Yeah, I did. I got mad for a minute. But then God said, hey, look, I caused that. I said, okay. Because I can't be in a bad place. I can't be in that place. I can't be having ill against you. Can't sleep at night because I'm always thinking about what you said or what you've done. That's why I'm at this place now. Wherever I find myself, at a place with people that are aggravating me, cause me discomfort, I do what the Bible says. Go into your closet and pray. And then, Father, that seeketh in secret shall reward you what? 
I don't ask God to take them out and kill them. I ain't God, look, they call me a problem. Why don't you go out and kill them? Why don't you have run them over by a bus or, or something? Uh-uh. Lord, bless them. Whatever's going on in their lives, I pray, God, you would deal with their heart and bring them to a place where they would love you. I pray in the name of Jesus that come against every spirit, every demonic power of the enemy that will cause influence in my life or their lives, God. I pray in the name of Jesus that I will walk in the fullness of your word and I will allow the expression of love to be expressed out of my heart towards that individual, God. I come against my own flesh and my own emotions and anything that will cause me to be ill against that brother or be ill against that sister. I pray this in the name of Jesus, and I keep praying it until there simply is a release. You sitting here with people you don't like? You sitting here with co-workers you talk about? You sitting here talking to your girlfriend or, or your best friend about your wife or husband? That's dangerous. That's very dangerous. That's how um, um, uh, people get into illicit, illicit uh, 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 relationships. Why would a man talk to another woman about his wife? Why would a wife talk to another man about her husband? We as believers should never do that. We're supposed to be different. Husband and wives should be able to communicate one with another without arguing or cussing or, or want to feel that she is taking advantage of me or he's taking advantage of me. Where did that thought come from? It did not come from God. If we're going to obey the Bible, let's obey the Bible. Let's stand on God's truth. Self-examination. And this is a hard one for many people to do. 2022, how, many, how much time you read your Bible? I don't want to compare it to nothing. I don't want to talk about TV or football. I'm asking you, how much time did you spend in individual time with God? Do you feel comfortable when you pray? When you're praying down there, do you feel like uh, you've been down there for two minutes or, or, or 30 seconds? When you come to church, what's your reason for coming? It should be received to God's truth and God's word. I don't want to be like the publican, bragging about, I fast twice a day. I led 20 people to the Lord by myself, and I suffered out there in the heat. And, oh, no. Anything that I do, you are as much a part of it, whether you're there present or not. I'm as much a part of what you do whether I'm present or not. How is that possible? Because I'm praying for you. I'm praying what God has called you to do. I'm praying for the ministers in the church and the elders in the church and what God has called you to do. I'm praying you would do it to his glory with all of your strength and all of your might. I'm praying that we will work together as a team because when they come into that door and they come in here broken, it's impossible for another broken vessel to heal another broken vessel. And so God wants us to do self-examination for the month of January. So here what the Lord said, husband and wife, pray for each other at least once a day, expressing in your prayer what you want for your husband. Wife, express to your husband what you want God to do in their lives. Let them hear it. Express it. Now, some of y'all may rebel. Some of you on the line may rebel, but I'm just telling you what God said. Singles, partner up with somebody. And when you partner up with them, you don't have to spend all day on the phone or, or whatever. Just, just pray for them. Father, I ask you to bless them. D listen, a lot of times we pray. We, we pray for what we know about somebody or what you have heard. Get to the place where the Holy Spirit is telling you exactly what to pray. And that's how I'm developing in my relationship. And I'm believing wherever God send me, somebody going to get delivered and somebody going to get saved. There has to be a boldness there to lay hands on the sick, to cast out devils. If we're going to be a body of Christ, if we're going to be one unit in this church, then everybody must come together and work together. And what God has said, if the foundation is not set, 
on healed believers, then everything else will just tumble down. So don't let me hear you talk about what happened last year. I don't want to hear somebody not here, they're not here. I don't know what you want, I don't want you to expect me to do about that. But those that are here, my prayer is that God will utilize their gifts, talents, and abilities to his glory. So God says, instead of fasting, this month is a month of what? Self-examination. Self and at the end of the month, I'm expecting God to do something amazing in our lives. I'm looking at my wife, and I want her to have a deeper relationship with God. I want her to love God more than she ever could love me. I want her to honor God more than she can ever honor me. And I know she wants the same for me. Because when we do that for each other, we can only explode and grow and accomplish the things of God. Month of January is what, church? Self-examination. And in that examination, I'm praying for people. I'm praying for people. And I'm praying for your healing. I'm praying for your deliverance as well as mine. And we deepen our relationship with God. But I need God more than ever in these coming months. I need God more than ever of what he's telling me and what he has told me to do to bring this church to a place where people are going to come in, come down that aisle, and receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior. There's nobody in here, not one person, not me and not you, that get any credit. It's us working together, praying together, whether that's you're online, or you hear in person, people need help. And not many people deal with themselves at all. And that got to stop. And so the Lord says, that's why he gave me this message, self-examination. What is your relationship really like with God? Are you trying to impress people? Are you praying like you're impressing people? Teaching like you're impressing people? Am I preaching because I'm trying to impress people? Teaching because I'm trying to impress people? It better not be because it holds no value. What well, holds value when I do it because I'm fulfilling the assignment, number one, he's given me, and number two, that my heart's right that I can help you. My marriage broken. I can't help you. Wayward kids, I can help you because I know how to pray. Situations that arise, I know how to pray. God has given me patience as he's given you. Father, we thank you this morning, and we give you praise for us looking at our own selves. And Lord, we all have made mistakes and said things and done things that simply um, was not right. And I repent in the name of Jesus, as I often do. And I ask that we would examine ourselves and look at ourselves and our heart and determine whether our relationship with you is genuine. We know we have a love for you. But, Lord, the Bible says if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And so I pray this morning in the name of Jesus that the Holy Spirit will bring to our remembrance and anything, anything that would cause hindrance in our relationship with God, we pray that it's exposed in the name of Jesus. That we can acknowledge it. We can be truthful about it. We can confess it and be honest in our heart and repent from a true heart, God. And so I ask you this morning in Jesus' name, give me the wisdom. Give me the understanding to guide and lead this ministry in my assignment. I pray for those that you have attached to this ministry, that God, that they would do it because they love you. And Lord, they would obey in order for us to walk in unity 
and to glorify you in the souls that you're going to bring into this ministry. Now, I ask these things in Jesus' name that you be glorified. I also pray this morning over the uh, giving of the people, those that have given to support this ministry through the years. God, I would like to go to each one and thank them every time they gave and supported. But, Lord, I realize you said give and it shall be given back unto us, that we can trust you in our giving to support the very ministry for which we have partnered with. Lord, let it not be one person in this ministry that does not support the ministry they belong to. I believe in the name of Jesus that, Lord, everybody that's a part of this ministry should support it. And, God, that we can accomplish the things that you called it to do. So I pray over the giving in the name of Jesus. And, Lord, I don't rebuke the enemy, but I pray you give them wisdom and understanding on how to manage the finances that you have allowed them to have, the strength you have given them to go to work. And, Lord, when we give, may we give it with a cheerful heart, not grudgingly, nor of necessity, but give out of a cheerful heart to support the work here at Life Changing Faith Evangelistic Ministries. And to that, Father, we give you all praise and all glory and all honor. And pray that your name will be lifted up, that you will draw all men to yourself. In Jesus' name, everybody say it. Amen. Amen. Let's get your communion ready. For those of you that are online, um, please get your communion ready um, as we begin to take communion. And communion in its own self is a, is a, is a case of self-examination. Read it. It's a, it's, a, it's a case of self-examination. For the Bible says some have taken it unworthily and have no, no heart of changing at all. And the Bible says many have died and many have become sick the Bible says not discerning the Lord's body, which you may think is just a, a something that church do. This is, this is more than that. This is, this, is, this is a spiritual application that has benefits both ways that we do it to acknowledge God. And so today, if you um, are serious about communion as I am, to remember and to honor God. I pray that you would do this with a repentive heart, an honest heart, and with confession and honesty to God that it really means more than just uh, this uh, wafer and this juice. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we come as believers being filled with the Holy Ghost, believing that Jesus died and rose again from the dead. And you said on the night that you were betrayed, that you took bread and broke it. And you simply said to the disciples, take, eat. This is my body, which was broken for you. Lord, cause us to understand the depths and the revelation of that. That our sin went into your body. And you don't want us to sin. You don't want us to allow sin to dominate in our lives because sin is torment. And I pray, God, as we take this communion, we do so by faith in the name of Jesus. Hold up the bread. Father, this represents your body, the brokenness in us, a heart that's sorrowful and repentant. And your body was prepared to take our sin, and we are so grateful. And, Lord, we remember that we're forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. And that body that was prepared took all of our sins, whatever it was. And because of faith and confession, we believe that Jesus died for our sins. And therefore, we become sinless and ask for forgiveness of every sin that we may have committed. We do so in faith. We do so in Jesus' name. Amen partake of the wafer. Here's one of my favorite parts. 
the Bible says, not based on good works, not based on how, money, how long you've been in church or how much money you gave. Doesn't matter about titles or position. The Bible says without the shedding of blood, there could be no forgiveness of sins. Therefore, I'm so grateful that life is in the blood and has been transferred to us. And we have received the guarantee of the Holy Spirit of God that we are the children of God. And so we hold up the juice that represents his blood. Jesus said, drink, for this is my blood in the New Testament. And often as you do it, in remembrance of me. Father, we thank you for the blood of Jesus, that there's not a human being on planet Earth, not a judge, not a jury that can ever convict us of a spiritual sense that we are forgiven and our sins were washed in the blood of Jesus. Our healing is in the blood. Our deliverance is in the blood. And I thank you, Father, that we don't have to work or try to work out being holy. The blood cleanses us. And we do this in remembrance of you that you are glorified in all things. In Jesus' name, let us partake in Jesus' name. And with that being said, let's do the benediction. Lift up our hands to the Lord. Father, the Bible says our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says we've been brought with the price, with the blood of Jesus, and we are not our own. And so, Lord, may we live like we belong to you. May we go out this week, whatever we may face on our jobs, whatever we may face in society, may we face it under the anointing and the power of the Holy Spirit. May we represent the kingdom of God as true ambassadors, representing the kingdom of God in holiness and righteousness. May we take this week, Lord, to examine ourselves and to pray one for another that we all may be healed, that you may be glorified and your name be exalted. Father, we give you all praise and all glory and all honor as we leave this place but never your presence. Give us traveling mercies to our place of abode. Keep us from all hurt, harm, and danger seen and unseen. May we watch what we see out of our minds to each other, our wives, and others on our job. May we live expressively to glorify you by letting our light shine. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. If there's anybody that needs prayer for any such thing, we are here to serve you and to meet your need. And if you need prayer, you can come now and we will certainly pray with you. Other than that, that will conclude this morning's service in the name of Jesus. Thank you for being here this morning. And blessings to all of you online. Thank you for joining us. See you next time. Don't forget Wednesday night uh, Bible study uh, picks up this Wednesday at 6 o'clock. At 6 o'clock. And we'll see you then. Amen.